Welcome to this ninth meeting of our clips on Genesis 1 to 11, the prehistory of the Bible. Today we jump from chapter 4 to chapter 6, verse 5, which is the beginning of the story of the flood. Now, this is a story you, if you don't know it yet, if you go to the movies and see the movie Noah, you'll be very much interested in. Now, we're, we have had five chapters, and it starts with the fact that the Lord said the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth. Every inclination and thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that He made humankind on the earth, and it grieved Him to His heart. So this introduction is very important, because this is not so much a story of vengeance, God regretting the fact that he created humanity with freedom and that the freedom gift was a disaster because people chose to to go away from the Lord and to commit wickedness. Basically it's a confrontation between the human heart that is always, according to that text, continually uh, thinking evil and God's heart that is really thorn because he wanted a perfect humanity, a humanity to his image. And he's feeling very sorry about what's happening. So the difference between the human heart and God's heart. We can use a parable and say God is a little bit like a parent. He loved he, a, man, a mom or a dad. He loves his children. But he feels very sorry that they're going astray. And he wants to do something about it. Now, he could have decided to put an end to creation and to start again without giving us freedom. But that's not what he decided. He decided, looking upon Noah, that he would save humanity and save creation. To make sh and in order to do that, he gets in contact with Noah, asks him, to build an ark so that humanity will be saved but not only humanity also human be also the, the, the animal kingdom everything except fish gets in the ark and in the ark we find also food now we have to remember that at this stage of the story both animals and human beings are vegetarians. That means that what does go in the ark? Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives, the animals by two, and also vegetation. So that means that what is being saved in the ark is not only the humanity, it's the whole of creation. And it's humanity as a a being of relation. If you remember what we said about Genesis chapter 2 and 3, the human being is, uh, there are four basic relationships that creates a human being. The human being and God. Uh, sorry, the first one was the human being and the earth. The man being taken from the, uh, the Adam taken from the Adama. The earth, man being taken from the earth. The, man, the human being and God. The human being and the animals, and the man and the woman. All these four relationships are being saved through the ark. And what is interesting is that throughout that story that starts in chapter 6, verse 5, and goes till the end of chapter 9, verse 17, Noah doesn't speak, he just obeys. Now, what's the purpose of that story? It's preparing the Israelite people for what will happen in the time of the exile. Only uh, through the prophets, God will promise that only one tenth of his people will survive. Those who put their trust in him. And through that little remnant, he will recreate his people. So this story of the flood is a prefiguration of what will happen with the people of Israel. A little remnant will come out and will make Israel survive. It's the same story with humanity and the whole of creation. We shall see the rest in our next clip. See you.
и все.